Welcome to my second c -sharp video tutorial, Make Us Go. In this tutorial, I will go over how to use conditions and actions, and how to loop a script in order to continually check for conditions. To do this, I decided it would be fun to cause an explosion. Everyone likes explosions, right? First, let's make a rudimentary ship. I won't be making mine pretty, but you can make yours the way you want. You can also retrofit one you are already using. If you like the ship and you don't want to lose it, you should probably make sure you do this to a copy of the ship instead. Now, we will want to choose a hackable block. I personally have chosen a door since it seems innocuous enough. Hackable blocks are any block with computer components in them. Next you need a timer somewhere. Set its action as the programmable block's run command. You also want to put a warhead down somewhere. Where isn't important, since this is an example, unless you want to use this as a booby trap later on. If you are using an existing ship and not a newly constructed one, you may need to modify your code to work with that ship. It isn't too hard to do. Just select different block interfaces to substitute the ones I'm using, and if you have more than one block of that type, either just choose the first one, change the index on the blocks variable to choose a different one, or use grid terminal system dot get block with name in place of any get blocks of type. We'll jump right into the code. All right, time to break this down. I'm skipping lines we covered in the previous tutorial. I my door door. This creates a new door object we can store a door in. I my warhead warhead. This creates a new warhead object we can store our warhead in. I my timer block timer. This creates a new timer object we can store a timer in. Blocks.clear. This is used to clear the blocks list of all objects. Always a good idea. While the code should be able to flush out the old objects by overwriting them, it is advisable to make sure they are gone so there isn't any unintended behavior. If door is being hacked, this line is the first really unique one we've encountered. When the condition, the parts in the parentheses, evaluates to true, the lines in the curly braces are executed. If the statement evaluates to false, it will skip the code inside the curly braces and either move on with the program or execute the code contained in the else statement. Like if, anything that is in the curly braces is executed, but only if the if block was skipped. But what if I want to evaluate if something is false? Glad you asked. We would use the NOT operator. This operator makes the evaluated operation opposite of what it evaluates. So, if NOT TRUE is equal to IF FALSE. IF NOT FALSE is equal to IF TRUE. For a better example, if NOT 1 is more than 2, this would return true because the not turns the false, one is not more than two, into a true. So what do we do when the door is getting hacked? The next two lines involve our warhead. The warhead we already know about. Let's skip to the next part. Get action with name is a method derived from the iMyTerminal block interface. It looks up an action with a particular name associated with your block. In this case, we are looking up safety. Safety is the equivalent to the safety check mark on a warhead's control panel. Next, we have apply. Apply tells the game to activate that action on your object. It requires the block to be passed into it. Why does it require the block? The apply method is actually part of iTerminal action and not part of iMyTerminal block. Get action with name 
returns an I terminal action. Because we already know that the get action with name returns an I terminal action, we can just use its apply method right away instead of creating a new object to hold it in first. The next line is exactly the same, only has detonate instead of safety. Go ahead and take a wild guess as to what it does. Now we get to else. We see that the only thing we are doing is telling the timer to trigger now. What this does is immediately trigger the timer. Since the timer's action is simply to rerun this program, it will make an infinite loop to constantly check to make sure the door isn't being hacked. What does all this do? The programmable block will check on the door approximately every quarter second or so. This can vary between systems. If the door is being hacked, it immediately disarms the safety of the warhead and detonates it. This could be useful in several ways. One, you can use it to make sure that if someone is breaking into something and you don't want them to get access to what's inside, you can trigger turrets or a warhead to take care of the problem. Since the turrets weren't active when they entered the room, they may not know they are present and be killed by them. As always, links for the code in this video is provided in the description. Let me know what sort of traps you come up with. Thanks for watching, and please like and subscribe if you thought this was useful. Hi there, space programmers and engineers. Thank you so much for watching my video. If you have any questions or suggestions, please write them in the comments below. To my left, you'll see the next video. To my right, you'll see the previous video. And here is a convenient button to subscribe. Keep coding, everyone.